Hi everybody, Candace Doniolo with Pet Boss Nation. How are you tonight? Looks like we've got, um, not that, oh, there we go. There's the room opening up. I apologize that I'm late for our live session. I was just go digging through the Global Pet Expo website so that I can share all kinds of amazing goodies with you. Now, um, I'm just gonna give it another minute. Normally, all right, here we go. Normally, I'm I'm interviewing um, experts that have written in the magazine, but tonight I just want to welcome you to our Pets Plus Live Beyond the Pages with me, Candace Daniello, your host, where we're going to dig into the Global Pet Expo experience. Um, our latest issue of Pets Plus for March is out. It's right here and it's behind me. You should have your copy in your mailboxes. Um, Hopefully you've received your copy. If you haven't, we'll toss a link into the chat room on where you can receive your free publication of Pets Plus. And there's three things in this magazine that um, I want to point out because they're very important. I want to point out um, first the main article, the main piece, it's called Ode to Joy. It's right here, Ode to Joy. I think what's great about this article is that um, there's so many key points in here that can help you um, at the Global Pet Expo. There's so many things you can take away in that article and then apply them to your experience at Global. The second article, which is right behind it, and my team that's watching now, they should be placing these links into the chat, into the chat room, and if you're watching a replay of this, we'll post them in the comments on Facebook. But the second article is about stealing time. <laughs> Don't we all need that? I'll tell you, everybody I talk to, you either need more time or you need more money. And um, this article is all about stealing away time. A lot of it um, is about your day to day, but there are really good nuggets in here as well about um, how you can manage your time even at Global Pet Expo. And then the last thing I want to mention is that the deadline to apply for Pets Plus Magazine's coolest store, America's coolest store contest is tomorrow. Have you applied? It's a great opportunity to um, get featured in the magazine, either as an honorable mention or heck, take the whole title and get your picture on the cover. So you can um, apply for that award at petsplusmag.com forward slash ACS. That will take you there. Let me just check back over in the chat real quick. Make sure you're, we've got everybody with us. All right, awesome. We've got everybody's great. Everyone's with us. Um, the other things I wanna mention here are that, dun, 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 I lost my place, here we go. You know, typically these shows are where I interview experts in the magazine, where we go beyond the pages, um, but in honor of the upcoming Global Pet Expo, Pets Plus and I thought that we'd do a very special training just for you. A training to help you, our independent retailers, maximize your time and the investment that you're making by going to the show. Uh, this show can be so overwhelming and we wanna ensure that you have the most successful time there because helping pet professionals like you is a true passion of both of ours. I do that through business consulting at Pet Boss Nation, where I work one-on-one -on -one and in groups to help retailers and independent brands with their marketing strategies, inventory planning, cash flow roadmaps, promotions, and HR help. And Pets Plus, as you know, if you get this magazine, is the pet industry's newest trade publication and is essential uh, in building business building content for anyone with a pet grooming salon, boutique, stores, kennels, boarding, dog walkers, dog trainers, and brands. It's pretty much jam-packed full with all kinds of wonderful resources. Now, I have been in the pet industry for over 15 years. I've also been to over 15 trade shows, or sorry, over 15 years worth of trade shows and over 30 trade shows. Uh, Global Pet Expo was actually my very first show back in, well, no, I won't say that. Pet, Global Pet Expo was my first show by myself with my pet consumer brand, Dogaholics. 
See, when I first got into the pet industry, it was in 2003, and I worked for um, my friend's company called Galloping Gourmets. We were a doggy bakery. Uh, well, not doggy bakery, but a doggy treat bakery, you know what I mean? And um, with her, we went to the H.H. Backer show, which I'm sure many of you know of that show. It's not around any longer, but um, that show we attended as buyers, and then we also had a wholesale cookie business, so we got to exhibit there as well. But global for me, you know, I, I was with Galloping Gourmets for two years and then global was my first show launching Dogaholics, my own business. And I took my mom to that trade show and it was nothing like I had ever experienced. It was much, much larger and had these amazing booths. And it was so fun to go and travel away from my city because the previous show was in my hometown. So there's just so much fun around trade shows and I absolutely, absolutely love them. So I promise that the hour that we're on here together um, will be filled with all kinds of goodies, not only tips um, to help you know about what's going on with the Global Pet Expo show as itself, but also a lot of tricks that I have learned along the way, and you can apply them at this show or at any future show you're going to, because you know coming up in early May is Retails in New York, and then we've got um, Super Zoo, which is at the end of June, and then in early October is Pet Connections Expo. So hold with me because we're gonna be talking about um, one, the Global Pet Expo as a whole. I'm gonna also go into preparing before the show. So if you're watching this live, we have less than a week to prepare. If you're watching a replay, you're gonna get even less time, but there is still time to maximize everything that you can do before you go. And then you also, uh, we're gonna go over once you're at the show, what you can do. And then even after the show is over, there's still lots and lots that you can do to maximize your investment. And that is a big investment. It's your investment of your time and your money. You have to leave your shop or leave your business if we've got exhibitors watching and you have to buy your hotel, your hotel and your airfare and you have to pay somebody else to mind the shop. And that actually reminds me of another story. The first time I left my shop back in 2006, I had my mom, here she went with to me with that trip to that trade show, but I had my mom watch my store while I was gone. And I came back and she had pretty much rearranged everything in the store and it drove me crazy. But it was still nice to be able to get away. So whether you're paying your team to be there extra hours or you have to bring in friends and family, coming to trade shows like the Global Pet Expo or the ones I mentioned earlier, are critical to your experience and the growth of not only opportunities you can find for your business, but for yourself too. Through the networking, through the, through the seminars, and through talking with the manufacturers and other retailers that are there, these types of experiences are like nothing else, especially when you're stuck in your own little shop, if you're a solopreneur, or if you have a couple part-time people, or potentially even if you're a really big business and you've got 20 locations or 50 locations, shows like this help you still have access and um, be in the know of the trends that are coming. And, and talking with other retailers helps you understand concerns and of customers across the country. There's, there's just so much that you can learn by going to a trade show like this. All right, so I'm going to move quickly because there's so much I want to cover. Um, but if there's anything at all that you need clarification on, I am going to be checking the chat um, to see if I can elaborate on any questions. Otherwise, my team member, Christina, our customer care and assistant coach at Pet Boss Nation, will be flagging your questions for me to answer Q&A at the end. Um, but definitely type them in the chat so that we don't forget them. And I don't have any slides, but I am going to be sharing my screen so that you can see the Global Pet Expo website. And there's a lot of tools on there that can help you um, have a better plan for yourself. And there's also going to be a replay available. Um, I also wanna mention that you should absolutely grab a notepad or to take notes, or you should open up your a Word document on your computer uh, so that you can copy and paste links because we're going to be sharing a lot of links too and and i don't want you to click on the link and go out of the portal um, or out of the replay so um, you just want to be able to copy and paste the link into another document would be great all right so don't be shy at all no question is silly 
Um, I do have a poll up. I'm going to, let me put up my poll. I'd love to see how many of you have been to Global before. Get to my polls. Okay, for those watching live, I would love to know if you've attended Global Pet Expo before or if this is your first time. Oh, yeah, you should, it should be up there. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's so funny. It's half and half. Half of you have gone before and half of you haven't. That's exactly what happened on our last Pets Plus, Pets Plus Live Beyond the Pages interview. All right, we've got 60%, a little bit more of Ben. So, um, you know, whether you've been or not, no question is a silly question because, you know, we've all been either newbies or we've all been experienced retailers. We also all have felt all the emotions of a show where we go and we spend all kinds of money that we don't have or that we're totally overwhelmed and we don't walk as much as we should have or we didn't feel like we saw anything new or maybe there was total panic back at our business and we were not focused on the task at hand. Like those are all the negative stuff. And so that's what um, we are okay answering those questions. I also want for you to throw in the chat what has been your experiences as we move through this. Like what is it that you've tried that, or if anything that I say rings a bell for you, this is an interactive conversation. This isn't just about my tips and tricks. I mean, believe me, I have plenty, but I would love for you to share your own as well. Uh, because there's so many positives to going to a trade show. But I will tell you that I hear all the time if it's worth it for a retailer to go or not. And you should, um, you know, going going to at least one trade show a year, whether it's global or one of the other ones I mentioned, is very, very important. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna dig in. Hope you're with me and you're ready. Okay, so this show, Global Pet Expo, is at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida. The first two days are from nine to six. The last day is from nine to five. It ends a little bit early. There's some fun statistics I just want to go over with you. And for those of you, since the majority of you are bet have been before, you know how massive this show is. Uh, but I thought this was interesting that the very first Global Pet Expo started 60 years ago and it only had 17 exhibitors. Wow, it's really come a long way since then, hasn't it? Because if you've been before, you know that there are over a thousand exhibitors um, with many of them from multiple countries. I think this year there's 28 countries in attendance, including the U.S. And all of those aisles are filled with over 16,000 attendees, with 6,000 of those being buyers. And uh, Global Pet Expo is also it takes up over 18 acres of prime real estate, I'm told, in Orlando, Florida. Although for me, I feel like prime real estate is only by the beach <laughs> and we're a little far from the beach. But um, Global Pet Expo is a, is a massive plat, uh, a piece of, of space. And it's actually, if you were to walk up and down every aisle, it's over five miles of walking to get through the whole thing. It's crazy. Put your Fitbits on, people. Now, there's also a new product showcase, and there are over a thousand new products in that, but there's also another 3,000 products on the show floor. And there's also over 30 different educational seminars that total about 33 hours of classes. And this show is the largest pet trade show there is. Now, the show floor is only open for 26 hours. So if you've got five, five miles to walk, plus 33 hours of seminars, you just don't have enough time. So let's do the math. I love these statistics, which is why I go into them. You know, my friend John Gibbons, he's the pet business professor. He gets into all of the data. And so he's the one that's helped share some of that information that I just shared with you. But he also calculated the math. So if you don't attend any seminars, if you don't visit the new product showcase, if you don't stop and chat with anyone on any of the, <laughs> in the aisles and you don't stop for food, drink or bathroom and you maintain a speed of two and a half miles an hour, then you can spend one minute and 13 seconds at every single exhibitor. 
<laughs> but that's not even possible. Who would even want to do that? So you have to have a plan. And I think I, I just want to express from the beginning that it's not about crossing the finish line. It's not about stopping at every single vendor, but it is about the journey that you go on, the journey of meeting new people, talking to the vendors that matter to you, and walking away feeling like you've had some solid wins. And some of the prep work we're going to get into, into for what you need to do in advance is to decide what solid wins are for you to have leave, leaving the show. Okay. So if you still want to go to the show, registration um, is still open. I will uh, say that I talked to someone from APPA not that long ago who puts the show on and I, and I asked them what their biggest challenge was at registration. And she said she could not believe the number of people that show up and have it, that they're not qualified buyers. They haven't brought their credentials with them. And so make sure that you've either registered in advance or that when you, you show up the day of that you have what they need and everything that you need is on their website. Now I want to show, I'm going to show a video with you about what it is because I know we've got a lot of people on with us tonight who have been before, but if you're watching the replay, it might be new. And um, it's a quick one and a half minute video that Global Pet Expos put out. So let me just pull that up real quick for you. If you want to know what's the latest and greatest, this is the place to do it. Talking with vendors, talking with distributors, this is the way to run a business. You get to catch up with old colleagues, old friends, but it really is where this dynamic industry comes together once a year and makes things happen. There's almost not a aisle that we can't find something neat and something new. We have found a lot of new products that we would have not known about. I will be here next year. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I cannot wait for next year. I'll definitely be back. Yeah, I'll be here the next year and the next year and the next year. The business starts here. Wasn't that a lot? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I can't believe it's gonna be here next week. Okay, so as you can see, there's lots and lots of exhibitors, lots of people to meet. So one of the first things we'll go through is um, the show floor map. Um, and again, if you are watching this and you've seen this before, please hold on to the end because I, I still go into a lot more than what you can find on the website. But um, I'm gonna share my screen and we'll go into the... Actually, I should do this first. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay, so I think you can see my screen now. Um, this is the 2018 exhibitor floor plan. So you have probably already aware of the website, globalpetexpo.org. This floor plan, I just wanna run through real quick, real quick what it looks like. Um, over here in the big purple area, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, all the way over, you have your new product showcase. This is a great place to start if you are getting, no matter when you're getting there, because um, for seasoned retailers, this is where they wanna go because they wanna see what maybe vendors they haven't carried in a while, maybe that what they've released or somebody that's important to them. Um, has put out. So you want to work through that really quickly. I'm going to talk more about that a little bit later. And then over here, we have a what's new section. This section uh, shows, th this section is just for exhibitors that it's their first time exhibiting. There's a chance that there's a first time exhibitor in these other areas. Maybe they didn't get their booth reservation in time to be in this area. So don't let that fool you, but this is a great place to start as well if you have minimum amount of time and you've been to the show before. Um, if you haven't been to a lot of trade shows, really anything and everything is gonna feel new. This is a great place to start. Then moving over here, you've got the aquatic lounge and then farther over, 
the China Pavilion, and farther over, all the way down here. I mean, that's <laughs> that seems like more than five miles worth of walking. Over here, you've got natural pets, uh, actually a pretty big area for natural pet. I uh, apologize there, I lost control. So you've got a few different areas. The thing to note is that even though we've got, oh, and I forgot to mention this purple area here, this is the boutique area. And each one of these little squares is only the littlest square is a 10, 10 foot by 10 foot booth. And so if it's a bigger, if it's a bigger booth, this is a 10 by 20, and then this is a 10 by 30. But all of these um, booths have been sold and you can click in and zoom in and, and you can actually hover over the product. Let's go find um, Pets Plus. Pets Plus has a booth. I won't be there this year with a booth, but I am gonna be hanging out in the Pets Plus booth. And they're at 3811. So we just have to find 3811. All right, where are we? We're close. We're so close. 38, here we go, Pets Plus. So 3811, not too far from the boutique area. And any of the vendors, if you wanna look at this interactive map, you can. Um, it is a little bit easier on the next step I'm gonna show you, but when you click on the map, it will allow you, you can you can go into your credentials here and, um, and, and then get more information and add it to your exhibitor profile, or your, sorry, your attendee profile. So I'm gonna close that for now. So that's the map. Woo, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, and uh, it's a huge floor plan. Um, the other piece, so we've got the new, we've got all those different areas. A couple other things I want to mention about the show itself before we dig into how you how you prepare in advance. Uh, I'm bringing these up because again, I, I've been in the industry for a long time and I've heard kind of some horror stories of what's happened. But um, children are children under the age of 16 are not allowed into the show. There is child care provided. Uh, we can put a link up of how you can book child care. I think it's ten dollars an hour. But we have had people who brought um, an infant before onto the floor who was turned away from walking in. So you definitely want to make sure to keep the kids at home, find a babysitter or get arrangements at the convention center. The same goes for animals. You know, a lot of these shows I've seen dogs in strollers and cute dogs walking around. Now, that doesn't happen at Global Pet Expo as much. And if you are an exhibitor that has a pet there, then you've missed the deadline because you had to tell um, ABPA that you were bringing pets to be in your booth. So um, definitely look into that. If, you're, if you have any questions or concerns, contact Global Pet Expo. They also have shuttles that go from the hotels back and forth completely free. So I think there's like 10 or 15 different hotels. Again, it's on the website to make sure that you can get back and forth from the convention center. It's also very easy to catch cabs and take an Uber. Um, so you can do either. Another really cool thing that I don't think I utilized, you know, I haven't been a retailer um, now in a couple of years, but there's an app for the Global Pet Expo. So just go to your app store and look up um, Global Pet Expo. And when you download it, it's actually a green, a little green icon. I'm not sure if you can see that. But once you get in, pretty much everything that's on the website is also on your mobile device. And once you have a username and a password and you start playing around with your, your um, planner that's in there, you can access that on your phone too. So that's really, really cool. All right. Um, next, I want to dig into preparing over the next few days that you have, because it's all about the prep. I'm telling you, if you walk in there with no plan, your head's going to be spinning and you're going to feel like you're wandering around and you're going to spend a bunch of money that you don't have. And you're going to end up with a ton of stuff that you're carrying. You're going to lose some things that you brought with you. So it's so important to have a plan. I just showed you the website of the floor plan. I'm gonna show you another tool that they have on their website to help you strategize. And this will take you a little bit of time, but you have, the weekend is coming up. Have a glass of wine and pull out your list of your favorite vendors and tackle the Global Pet Expo's show planner feature. Let me share my screen. Okay. 
When you go to Global Pet Expo site, there is an area up here that says attend, and then you can go to your personal planner, or you can go straight to the exhibitor list. In the personal planner part, you can just put in your name, your first name, your last name, and your company, and your email. You actually do not have to be registered for the show to participate in this uh, piece. It's a nice little, I'm gonna get logged in though. Nation. Okay, and create your planner. This takes you to this section where you can have access your exhibitors that you've selected to go see, or you can make an agenda of all of the classes and seminars you wanna to go to. And this is so cool. You can actually add personal tasks and it can all be hosted inside your planner. So if you're somebody who makes a lot of meetings, whether it's with a, a top vendor or a new vendor you wanna see, and that that's a strategy that I hadn't done in my early years, but it's a great thing to do is to make make appointments with the vendors that you wanna to talk to. So you can just add a task, and then here you give it a title, a description, start and end time, you can prioritize what these are for. Um, and it's a great way to keep your team organized if you're bringing a lot of team too. Let's go back to our event planner. Now here, I wanna go back to the home. I just thought that was a really cool new feature I wanted to show you. Now, when we come back to the home and we're gonna to go to the exhibitor list, this is what's really important. If you have the time, you can completely go through this long list of exhibitors. You can sort it by booth or by company name. You can go through the whole list. Again, we taught, said there's over a thousand. If you don't have the time to go through the thousand <laughs> vendors that are here, I would recommend that you go into your point of sale system or if you don't have this information in your point of sale, you can you know, pull it from your gut, but I hope you have a point of sale system, and pull out your top, I don't know, 40 vendors. It depends on how many vendors you work with because not all of your vendors are going to be exhibiting at Global Pet Expo. So just pull a list of your vendors and sort your list of vendors by um, who you sell the most of and all the way down. So what I was just explaining was what you need to do in your point of sale system. You're gonna take that report and you're gonna start looking at your top 40 vendors and you would type in their name right here in this section and see if they're exhibiting. Because that's a really smart move so that you can um, target those vendors and so that you can see if they're having any show specials that you should take advantage of or if they um, have a new product release. You wanna see the people that you do business with. And then you can spend the rest of your time exploring and discovering new visitors. But if you don't have the time to go through this whole thing, that's what I suggest you do. If you're a trade show junkie and you, like, like me and you absolutely want to know every business that's there and discover new products, then this is how you do this. OK, you can take this list. It's very long, but you can sort. Um, you, uh, you can go into this little advanced search here. My former business was all dog. So I would just look at dog stuff and hit set. You can see that there's other options if you just do birds or fish, um, or if you wanna, I also looked at dog and I'd always look at general miscellaneous. And, and these categories are what the exhibitors choose. So once you've got your list, uh, there's a couple other things you can do with this now. You're able to click on the manufacturer. Oh, I'm not logged in. I thought I was logged in. Um, so the login piece, you need to have your registration um, credentials. But what you can do is um, click on that, click on the link, the window box pops up and you have a description of the manufacturer as well as their website. Click on the website, give it a quick glance to make sure that uh, it's anything that you might be interested in. If it is, then you can come over here and you can click the little bookmark tab, okay? Um, this star here means that they're first time exhibitors. Uh, and then this little bookmark or this little suitcase here means it's gonna add it to your planner. I like the bookmark because you can go through and find all kinds of vendors that you wanna see. Maybe I wanna see these guys, maybe, maybe these guys. And then I, you know, you can search up here. Let's look for Pets Plus Magazine. Pets Plus, see if they pop up. Oh, I gotta clear my filters. So Pets Plus, why they're in here? <laughs> they're not coming up. I had them. There we go. Pets Plus, you can bookmark it. 
And then the cool thing about the bookmarks is that you can then clear your filters again. Oh my goodness, let me go back. Here we go. Oh. Let's go back to the exhibitor list. Okay, you get back to this ex main exhibitor list. There's this bookmark here where you can show only the booths that you've bookmarked. So what's great is that you've now looked at your top vendor list that you sell. You've found if they're coming here or not. You've bookmarked everybody that way. Maybe you've gone through and you've sorted just by the stars and you've sifted through the people who are just new exhibitors and you've bookmarked those people. And now you have a pretty consolidated list. Obviously, this is just an example. You can then take your CSV file, export that, and you get uh, just a pretty simple Excel file. Not sure if you can see this now, though. Let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, so when you export the Excel file, it gives you just a pretty simple, or the CSV file gives you a pretty simple list. Now that you've bookmarked all the people that you wanna see, you can then start making comments if you want about why you're going there. So it could be that you wanna see the new item that you saw on their website. It might be that you need to talk to them about free samples, or maybe it's that the line just isn't selling for you and you wanna talk about what you can do to partner together. So make, feel free to just like start a new row, or a column and start making some comments about these people that you wanna see. This is now a much smaller list than having to look at the big master list. Then before you leave home, you wanna sort this list by the booth number. And how you do that is you select everybody that's on your list, you go up to um, sort, there's a sort function here, you can go to custom sort here. This should do it though by clicking that. And now we have all of these businesses sorted by booth number. Because if you remember, when we look at the map, all of the map, all of the vendor booths are organized by number. So what this does for you is that no matter if you walk into the venue and you start all the way in the 1000s or less than 1000, you can pretty much zoom through the rows and because over ahead of you are big signs that say what row number it is and down on the floor in front of you are signs that say what booth number. And so this Excel spreadsheet becomes your roadmap of the people that you should care about. Um, and then what is also great is that at the end, it's okay, it's okay to do, like to derail from your roadmap. But what's great about this little quick little list is that if you are in a hurry and your time's wrapping up or the clock's ticking down because they do, they kick you out. Uh, they kick you out at the end of the show. What you can do is you can sort through that list and you can look and you go, okay, great, I'm in aisle 5400. Um, who do I need to see in 5400? And then you can go directly to your list. This gives you a very, very targeted way to be the most efficient with your time. Um, let me see. Pull the list bookmarks. Okay, the personal planner. I showed you that. I love that. So there's there's a that global pet expo website can become a total vortex uh, to to of information. And so to repeat, what I like to do is I like to pull our top vendor list and go through that. Pull any vendors that you want to have conversations with and see if they're in there and bookmark all those people. Then it's very, very important that you are a curator of your inventory, that you have fresh goods, that you have things that get your customers excited to come to see you. And so going to trade shows like this, it's not about going and saying hi and talking to all the people that you have amazing relationships with that you've carried for forever. I mean, that's important, but you absolutely wanna go look for the new people. So the next thing to do on that list is to just to, to sort by those stars those are the most important people to sift through their websites and then bookmark them if you're interested, okay? And then you've got your plan and then you can print out that Excel spreadsheet or upload it to um, Dropbox or a Google Drive and you have it there on your phone. All right, um, so again, as we're talking, I'm gonna get into now, I'm done with Global Pet Expo's website. And now I wanna dig into some of the other really interesting things that you can do for your business to make the show easier for you. Um, the first thing we've talked about is having a plan. The When you're thinking about products, it's so, so easy to 
get excited about the shiny new object. Or for me, it was collars and bakery treats. I, we had a huge bakery case. I loved all those frosted goodies. And so I would always overbuy in bakery and I would always overbuy in collars and leashes. So um, it's important for you to have a plan. And you can do that in two ways. The first is to think about what words describe your business, the top three words you'd use to describe it. And then you can look at every product that you find through the lens of those three words. Um, the words should be things that your customers resonate with. And the words could be things that you value in your business, if it's quality or if it's price or if it's uniqueness or indestructibility or American made, um, colorful, exciting, trendy, stable, like, you know, whatever, whatever those things are, uh, those words are, think about that and come up with a few words. And that's just your guide through everything. The next piece is to actually have a budget. <laughs> you have to have a budget. You can't just show up hoping that um, you're going to find um, no more than what fits on a credit card that you have. Uh, I've been there many times where I've looked and pulled up on my credit cards and gone, okay, how much can I spend? Uh, I want to bring in a lot of new inventory because my old, the inventory I have is not, is not moving. So this is a bigger conversation that we can go into even more if you're interested. Um, but, but, the things we want to do to determine what kind of a budget we have is to first think about what your current state of your inventory is in. Is, is your inventory old? Is it fresh? Look into your point of sale system and determine um, how much of your inventory is more than 90 days old. At Pet Boss Nation, we like to encourage our clients to have fresh goods every 90 days. And so that means you need to calculate your turn. Turn is something that, um, you know, it, it, a turn means how often are you turning your product? And the way that you can figure that out is that you take your total sales and you're gonna wanna do this, not your store, you're gonna do this by department. Take your total sales by department for let's say the last year. So you can do 2017 or you can just do year to date backwards. Your total sales by department. And then you also then wanna look at what the average inventory that you carry on a given day, maybe not the holidays, it could be now, it could just be on, you could take an average for the year. The average amount of inventory that you carry by department at retail dollars, okay? So you've got two numbers here. You've got your total sales at retail dollars, what you sell it for and all the inventory on average that you have in a given period of time. And then you want to divide your total sales by the amount of inventory you have on average, and that should give you a number. That's your turn number. So if you have, if you turn things two times a year, that means every six months you sell one of those things in that department. If your turn is 12 times a year, if it's 12, then that means that every month you're selling one thing from that department. That is an average to your, not one thing, but an average in ratio to your, the amount of inventory that you carry. So when you look at turn, the num that number is important because it helps you know, am I turning things too slow? Am I turning things too fast? Do I want to have more inventory? Do I, to meet the customer's needs? And then you can really look at if you're turning at only, Every six months, that means you've got old inventory because we want to be turning every 90 days. So we want as an average for your store to be turning four times. Now things like your food or treats, those should be turning much, much faster at like a, an eight, some, some stores even at a 12. But it's just really important to look at that information because then you'll know where you should be focusing your spending money. So if you do only have $5,000 on a credit card or you do only have 10,000 or whatever it is, maybe it's only $500, you can go to a show like this and know that, okay, I am turning bully sticks like crazy or I'm turning chews and, and, and chews and edibles really quickly. So I don't have a big budget. So I can't get, I can't lose track of my focus and, and buy more collars. I have to focus on 
the treats because those sell really well for me. They're turning really quickly. So that's what I'm going to look for. Um, so that's one way. Another way is to look at your kind of stock to sales ratio and to think about um, how much you have in your store by department as a whole as a percentage of your sales. And then you can look at as a whole by department, how much of that inventory makes up your whole store. I have my little handy, I don't know if it's gonna show up. I have a little iPad here, I'm gonna show you this. This is a good way to know if you're over, over or under inventory. Now all these services, or all these math formulas I'm talking to you about, this is what we help our clients with at Pet Boss Nation. We do inventory planning and um, cash flow roadmaps and we help you with your turn and your, we give you buying budgets so that when you go to a show like this, you actually know how much you can spend at a show by department for like the next 12 months looking ahead. So if you're interested in that, you can just type it, type in the chat or reach out to us. But I know this might be a little too intense, but this is so important because when you go to shows, you're either gonna spend too much money or you're not gonna buy the right stuff. So this is why these are important. So um, you wanna look at your departments. Let's say you've got dog food. I'm writing down some notes. Dog food, cat food, treats, toys, and collars. All right, so there's our departments and this is our total sales and total inventory. Hopefully I get some math right here. <laughs> okay, so you wanna make a grid like this. I need to go back to my screen here so I can make sure that this doesn't show up funny. Okay, so you can just, you know, you can pull a report like this. Sorry, my handwriting is so sloppy. But you are gonna make a, co a column that has all of your categories on one side. And at the top, you've got total sales and total inventory. And at the bottom, we want each of these departments to total 100%. So if I pull this back down and I start pulling data from my point of sale and I say, okay, my, um, or, you know, however you track this, my dog food makes up 40% um, of my sales. My cat food is 5%. My collars are 5%. So that makes 50 and we'll just do this 25 and 25. Okay. So looking now here, I've got my total sales. Let's see what we've got. I've got all my categories here. I have my total sales as a percentage of the 100%. So I'm not your dollar volume, a percentage. So dog food makes up 40% of my sales. Cat food makes up 5% of my sales. Treats make up 25%. Toys make up 25%. And collars make up 25%. You can look at this based on, again, the last 12 months. Or if you want, you can look at the last you know three months. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You just want to compare. Uh, you just want to keep it consistent. And then if you look at your total inventory that you have on hand in a given moment, every all the inventory you have on hand, and let's say, make some new totals down here now. 35, 50. Okay, I think this totals 100%. Okay, so then you pull out your actual total inventory as a percentage of your total inventory. So this is again at, at um, retail dollars. So let's say your dog food as a, your total inventory only makes up 20% of your inventory, um, but it's 40% of your sales. And cat food is 5% um, of your uh, sales, but you've got, it makes up 15% of your inventory. Treats are 25% and 15% of your inventory. Toys, 25-25. And then collars are five and 25. I hope that's, that is not backwards for you. <laughs> but um, the reason this is important, let me show you again. The reason this is important is that if you want to get these in line with each other as much as possible. So for dog food, making up 40% of your sales, but it's only 20% of your inventory, that's a good indicator that you don't have enough inventory. You need to be buying more dog food because we want these to be as close as possible together. Another good indicator, cat food. It's only 5% of your sales, yet your cash is tied up into 15%. Treats, 25 and 15. 
And then toys is looking good, but again, collars down here is only 5% of your sales, yet you've got 20, it makes up 25% of your inventory. So those are just some two key factors you can look at to help you decide where you're gonna spend your money when you go there. If you're looking at numbers like this, I mentioned that dog food was under inventoried and that cat food is over inventoried. So when you go to a show like this, you wanna be looking for dog food and taking advantage of dog food uh, discounts. And cat food, you need to stay away from the cat food because you need to be discounting and moving through the inventory that you already have. Okay, makes sense? We can uh, keep talking about that in the Q&A if you have any questions about that, or I'd love to get on a call with you privately and we can talk about it too. Um, but those are some key factors there on what to, how to make a budget for yourself. Not even so much a budget about the dollars. I mean, that's that's a much harder, kind of harder a thing to look at without knowing your business. And I, cause I hate for it to tell you to spend more money, but I think that the two examples I've given you have at least given you some guidelines on where to go with that. All right. Um, now here are the tools. I want to get into the fun stuff. Now we're talking about the tools to bring with you to a show. All right. Um, I love, well, because you know, my cell phone is just all, it's the most important tool um that i have <laughs> i feel like you use it for social media you use it to check your email people get a hold of you at your store and when you're in trade show environments like this uh you lose your battery pretty quickly so i like to get um these items here we've got the uh it's like a just a portable battery pack you can charge it with the usb cord i got this one at target um, it's been great. I, it's got two USB ports. You can charge it. It extends the life of your phone or whatever else you have with you. Another thing that you should bring with you is to just get your own, um, Wi-Fi hotspot, MiFi kind of thing. Um, again, you know, in a trade show, sometimes they have free Wi-Fi, but it's not great. And, uh, your signal is not great. And so sometimes I'm um, having your own little hotspot is helpful, especially if you need to leave the lobby and get onto your laptop or any kind of, or not leave the lobby, but leave the, leave the show floor and go to the lobby. You have your hotspot with you. You can get hotspots through your cell phone provider. Um, and, uh, it's not very much more to add to your bill. Okay. So that's the part about staying connected. You don't want to lose your connection. And <laughs> these are long days. You start early in the morning, you go through the show all day, and then you sometimes go out and have fun at night. So it's important to have that, um, extra, charge you could also should bring your i didn't i didn't I don't have my example with me but i have one down there bring your cord and bring your little outlet um to plug into the wall because there are outlets in some areas around the perimeter of the events or if any of the exhibitors have lights in their booth and you and you have a good relationship with them you might be able to connect to their outlets which are kind of behind the booth so i would only do that if it's not going to obstruct their space and if you know them well but that's a little trick too okay so even though uh, large carts are not allowed in the event, you're going to want to have something to carry some of this stuff with. Uh, in the early years, I think I, I hauled around a bag like crazy and <laughs> my shoulders were hurting all day long. Uh, and for weeks afterwards, I sometimes even needed an adjustment from the chiropractor because you just get so much literature from the manufacturers that are there. Uh, one of the tricks is that you can get a cart. I have a pulled up here. These are, and I know it seems really silly, but um, these carts from Office Depot, they're only $24.99. They fold up completely so you can even fit them into your suitcase. I've done that before where it flats down, fits into my suitcase. I can take it with me to the show. I wheel it in really easy and then it just pops open and it gives you a place to put your stuff. Um, and I tell you, you will be, uh, the talk of the trade show when people see you with that. They love, they're so jealous of that little cart. Um, so the cart's handy. Uh, you also want to bring a refillable water bottle. Okay. So I've got some fun ones here. <laughs> you want to bring a refillable water bottle because water is expensive and they do have water fountains. So you should bring something that's reusable that you can fill. Mm -hmm. Take a sip now. Another thing about Global, SuperZoo doesn't do this, but Global, unless they've changed it, they give unlimited refills on soda. 
Not that you should be drinking a lot of soda, but one of the things that you want to do is when you buy a soda, you can save your cup instead of throwing it away and refill on sodas. Another thing I love to have is a little handy lip gloss. I talk a lot and my lips always get dry, so I bring one of these. So those are my, my little like staples I like to bring with me. Then we have the factor of staying organized. So this is all prep you need to do ahead of time, but um, there are a few key things you can do to keep yourself organized at the show. One is that you need to make room on your phone for videos you're gonna be taking there and pictures you're gonna take. And that's one of the benefits to now having a digital P, you know, whether it's an iPad or a phone like this, is that you can take pictures of the things that you like. You can take pictures of order forms. Um, you can even turn an order form picture into a PDF and email it to yourself. You do not have to lug around all of that stuff. Technology exists to make it easier for you. So um, one app you should download on your phone, if you don't have it already, is Dropbox. Um, Dropbox is free if you don't up to a certain point of storage, but Dropbox should be on your phone as an app and you create folders ahead of time or even there that say, you know, super, sorry, Global Pet Expo, must order, Global Pet Expo, save for later, or folders that even just say like interesting or pictures. You could make a whole folder organization system within Dropbox to take pictures of things as you're going along you don't wanna miss. And when you're doing an upload into Dropbox, there is a PDF function. So it's great because you can um, then email yourself these documents so that when you're back at your business, you can place your orders later. Or maybe when you're back at your hotel room and you get onto Wi-Fi, you can um, fill out the order form as a PDF and type right into it. So that's handy. So you wanna download and make room on your phone, sorry, download Dropbox, make the folders. You wanna delete things off your phone you don't need if you're running out of storage because it's bound to happen. Um, you also want, if you're a paper person and you're not into technology, have an accordion folder or something there to um, drop orders that you know you like, things you're interested in, organize your kind of trapper keeper. You wanna also bring lots and lots of business cards because that's how you're gonna network. I also love mini staplers to staple your business cards to your order forms because on day one, you're going to be, you know, day one and day two, you're going to be collecting all of this information in order forms. And by on the last day is when we usually submit orders. And sometimes you're in too much of a hurry. You don't want to write your business information down. So you staple your card onto the order form. I'd also recommend you can make a little label that has uh, your store's information on it and potentially your credit card number if you are okay with that. Because again, you can take that little label and attach it to any order forms that you collect throughout the show. Then you also could memorize your credit card number. I did that many years. So you'll also impress a lot of people with that trick. Let's see, I know we're running out of time. I have so much to say, I have so much to tell you guys. So if you wanna stick on, stay on, I'm gonna keep talking. So, cause I wanna get through this for anyone who wants to watch a replay. So I hope you stay with me. We're almost, we're not totally done, but I might not be done by the very end. But um, other key things to just make sure, again, I'm sharing this with you because I've been there and I've done that. But if you were to, um, I, I've oftentimes left my cell phone or my notebook in, uh, a booth because I got so excited about you know writing something down or talking to a manufacturer that I set my phone down. So on your back of your phone, I'd recommend um, putting a, if you're there with someone, putting their phone number on the back, almost like a call if lost, because then the vendor knows who to call and get a hold of you to let you know where your phone is. Um, you could also in your notebook that you're carrying, put your cell phone and business information in the notebook so that if you leave it somewhere, they open it and they know who to call. Let's see, all right, once you're there at the show, uh, this is not just about finding things to buy. It's also about um, networking and being seen. There's lots of opportunities where you can connect with other retailers in the um, concession stand line or at the uh, seminars or there are after party events that you can go to. Um, you want to be seen and you want to network. 
not only with your peers, but because there's so many other influencers there and there's so many brands that you could potentially connect to with. And if you're kind of being cranky Candace, <laughs> cranky in, in the line or not talking to people or super introverted, you're gonna miss these opportunities. So get step out of your shell, ask someone that you're standing next to, um, just ask them what their name is or just literally say, hi, my name's Candace they're going to talk to you and then you can just say, what do you do? And they'll share with you. And you really never know the type of connection that you can make there. The really cool stuff that's on Global Pet Expo's website is um, there's so many seminars. I'm actually one of the speakers. I get to talk on Wednesday three times. <laughs> going to hopefully not be totally exhausted by the end. But there are lots and lots of experts for you to watch. Um, they cover everything from online sales, HR, merchandising, marketing, um, myth busting about pet foods, nutrition, and so, so much more. So make sure that you attend some of the seminars. Uh, they're totally free. You can go to as many as you want. They are just first come, first serve for the seats. So I'd recommend looking through the exhibitor list that's on their website. You can also flag them and add them to your planner that's on there. But in addition, I would put them in your calendar and set reminders or a timer on your phone for the things you don't want to miss, um, whether it's an appointment that you don't want to miss or a seminar. And I'd give yourself about 15 minutes before that um, appointment needs to happen because this show is so large, it might take you a while to get from point A to point B. So set the alarms on your phone. There's also tons of special events. There's a retailer excellent awards breakfast that is totally free for you to attend. It's a lot of fun to just see the different retailers that have applied for awards to get their to get the awards. There's um, a young professionals networking thing. There's a cocktail hour uh, after the first night right in the lobby. And Pet Boss Nation, we are having our own party that we would love to invite you to. Uh, we're gonna share the link in the uh, chat room here and uh, we'll put it in the comments on another platform afterwards if you're watching this on Facebook or something like that. But um, we just love to connect with pet professionals and we'd love to have you there. If you come to the party, you get a fun goodie bag. This little I'm the pet boss goodie, I'm a pet boss goodie bag filled with amazing things. Um, so we hope to see you there. Now, let's see. I wanna dig a little deeper into some of the strategies that while you're there, okay? You, when you go to the new product showcase, I talked about that earlier, the new product showcase is filled with amazing things. You're not allowed to take pictures technically. I will tell you a little lie and let you know that I, you know, I sneak them in where I can get them, <laughs> but I sneak them in just so I can use them as social media. But um, that's technically a lot not allowed in the show rules. So another strategy that I encourage you to use is to write down the product that you want to see and the booth number that you want to see. You can cross reference that with the list that you've already downloaded from your, you know, planner ahead of time. You've got your sorted list and that's organized by booth number. And as you're walking through the new product showcase and you discover the new products, they're going to have little cards that tell you what booth number they're at. You can start to insert your the booth number that you want to visit into the planner that you've already made and um, make note because when you go to that booth and take a picture of the product in the booth or get to know the, uh, the owner and the story behind the product or get a picture of the product with the owner and the manufacturer, that is social media gold or post conference email gold. Your customers are gonna eat that up. They will love to be on the inside journey with you inside this trade show. And that's something you should totally be doing, is letting your customers know that you're coming to this amazing show to find the latest trends for them and to get them excited for you. I have some retailers, and I did this for myself too, I'd be throughout that whole show taking pictures left and right, asking for feedback, do you like this, do you like that? Or if you don't have enough time during the day, just take a bunch of photos throughout the whole experience and at the end of the night, make an album that curates the whole day's experience for you. Your customers are gonna love it because they don't get to go to stuff like this, right? All right, so um, now that you've, if you've sifted through uh, the website, you've made your plan, you've got your list, you really should be able to spend um, the first day going through the new product showcase and um, then going through your list of vendors. 
Second day is also going through your list of vendors. That third day you can use to kind of backtrack to anyone that you still need to see or anyone that you saw in the new product showcase you haven't gotten to yet. And it should be for about, it should be about dropping off orders. Um, that way you have your plan, you have your roadmap, you have your strategy for getting to the whole show. You are not stopping at every booth because you can't possibly do that. So um, look at your list, stick to your list. If you're running out of time, keep looking back at that list, highlight the things that you really want to go to so that you walk out of that show happy with what you accomplished. Now, one of the most important things too is just to have fun. Remember that article, Ode to Happiness, that was in Pets Plus this month? You just wanna have fun, whether it's through social media or getting to know your vendors. You know, you could bring them, bring the vendors. The vendors are there. They've got the hardest time actually of everybody. They have to stand in their same booth the entire time. Now, I've lived both sides of the trade show experience. I was a retailer for so long and then now I exhibit. And I have to tell you, as a retailer, this show is way more fun. So if you have vendors that you have close relationships with, offer to bring them a snack or, or maybe even I've had, I know some people that make goodie bags and bring special gifts or handwritten notes to exhibitors and manufacturers just because they've developed such good friendships or you might want to show your top vendors that you appreciate them. Um, I even have some manufacturers where I know they're there at that show by themselves. So I've offered to go over and let them like run to the bathroom or offer to get them lunch because I know if they leave their booth, they're missing an opportunity for sales. So get to know retailers, get to know vendors, have fun, take pictures, go to some seminars, go to some cocktail parties and have the best time you possibly can. Okay, we're coming to the home stretch here. I didn't go too much far over. The last thing is to really think about what you need to do once this whole show is over. The whole thing's over, you fly back home, and now you're like, great, I'm done. <laughs> no, that's not what you should do. Now, if you were somebody who placed a bunch of orders at the show, you have all this new merchandise that's showing up. You should get ahead of the game and start creating those items in your point of sale system, creating the purchase orders, educating your team about the new products that you brought in. Maybe you send them a quick email recap at the end of the show or the day after the show that lists links to the websites of all the new lines that you found and the things that are on their way so that they can spend time learning about them before they show up. So create the items, tell your staff. And then you also, um, I think they just spend time like looking through your business cards and the opportunities that you found, the connections that you made and reach out. Make phone calls, send emails, thank, send thank you cards, follow the brands that you've discovered on social media. But all of those things take time. And as in that second article that was in the Pets Plus magazine, all these things take time. So right now, when you know you're coming back and when you know you can, I would block out time on your calendar to do those things I just mentioned. Because you have to find the time. All right, everybody, I got I got everybody to hold on with me for a little longer. I just thank you so much. It doesn't look like, I mean, I probably talked so much and gave you so many ideas that you were just taking notes, I hope, and that we don't have any questions. But if you have questions, please feel free to, to type them now or to reach out to us at hello at petbossnation.com. We'd be happy to answer your questions there. And I just thank you so much for joining us tonight because I know that your time is so important to you and precious. Again, my name is Candace Daniola with Pet Boss Nation. Uh, I'm so honored that you join us, joined us. Please invite your fellow pet business owners to join us for future episodes of Pets Plus Live Beyond the Pages. We have a new magazine coming out very soon of Pets Plus in, um, in March, or sorry, April, I'm a month ahead. And um, make sure that you're getting the latest issue by going to petsplusmag.com. And if you're attending the Global Pet Expo, thank you so much, uh, Christina, for putting that in the chat. Please attend. Please stop by the Pets Plus booth. They are at booth number 3811. And also, I'm doing laser coaching, 15-minute laser coaching sessions on Thursday, the 22nd. And there's a link in the chat if you would like to... Um, book your appointment there. Uh, we're only doing them from 1030 to 1230 quick little sessions, totally free. I'm going to help you with your biggest challenge that you're seeing in your business right now. 
And if you have time, please join me on Wednesday for all my talks. You can find them on the website but of uh, Global Pet Expo, but I'm doing a talk in the morning on Wednesday called 10K Weekend, The Secret Strategies to Making Money Fast. And then at 10.30 on Wednesday, I have How to Stop Online Retailers from Stealing All Your Customers. That is the big question. Why is that happening and how is how do I stop it? And then the last talk at four o'clock at the end of the day on Wednesday is business for sale, how to cash in when you're ready to cash out. So we hope to see everybody there. Have a wonderful night. And as I always like to say, lead the pack, pet bosses. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody.